to go on like this. It's disrupting the other workers. Shut his traps and get the machine fixed. And send me some laudanum for my head. Ah, the Industrial Revolution. Metal machinery, steampunk factories, and crippling workplace accidents. What a time to be alive. Of course, it wasn't always pretty to look at, but the progress that eventually made our lives possible started here. Today, we'll take a look at the Industrial Revolution to see how the landscape of the world changed as technology advanced and the world began to industrialize. To start, let's look at the state of technology that existed before the Industrial Revolution. Most of us are probably familiar with this era of history as the Middle Ages. This was the period of history after the Dark Ages, when the advancement of science and human thought had mostly ground to a halt, at least in Europe. Most scholars devoted their time to the understanding of religion. Christianity was a very powerful force in Europe at the time, and it often formed the basis for a lot of military campaigns. Religion in general was a dominant force for a lot of human thought, until the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. Events that I would argue occurred because of the invention of the printing press and the increased production of literature. At this moment in history, the change from medieval technology to the first industrial technology was driven by the advancement of the scientific community. Isaac Newton's invention of calculus and the growth of the scientific community through the efforts of hundreds of experimentalists was instrumental for this to happen. Developing an understanding of the motion of physical objects is vital if you want to design machines that move in the physical world, and it helps a lot if you can use mathematics to calculate the necessary quantities. How much force do we need to move this machine? And can we use this motion to do work? Okay, so if we can understand how physical objects move with math, what kinds of inventions can we create? What can we make? Well, what about those water mills? Can we use the current of the river to drive more machines than just a millstone for grinding flour? Could we figure out another way to use the current of the river to reduce the labor needed for other jobs as well? Well, actually, there were quite a few jobs that we could make a lot easier with the power of mills. Life for most people during this time revolved around constant drudgery to scrape out an income to survive. For most people, they lived lives of hard labor. An overwhelming majority of the population had to work from dawn to dusk in order to keep society functioning. At this point, human society was a couple thousand years old. So rulers had a lot of experience with famine and they knew that it had to be avoided at all costs. Bring out Janet! So of course, strong food production is the key to a stable society. And even during this period of history, there were numerous times when food production was inadequate to support the population. The Irish potato famine comes to mind. But anyway, weaving cloth took a lot of skill and weavers' guilds were the dominant force in the textile market. This was also the period known as the Age of Sail. Imagine how much canvas you need, how much cloth has to be woven, to make sails for all of those ships. Of course, gunpowder was another major technology of the time before the Industrial Revolution. A major part of the European Age of Discovery was the use of muskets and cannons. There was a very large amount of raw cotton available from the Americas thanks to cotton plantations. The evolution of mills from just food production to also including textile production was a massive shift in the economic paradigm. All of a sudden, a textile mill could produce hundreds of square yards of cloth in a fraction of the time it would take a weaver to make. As a result, the owners of the factories could charge a much lower price and still make a tidy profit, undercutting the competition and forcing the weavers' guilds out of the market. This was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the beginning of the industrialization of the economy, of how humans would gather resources from their surroundings, create products with them, and distribute them as needed or desired by those with enough disposable income to purchase them as they wished. The colonies were already established, thanks to the invention of the compass to allow for navigators to make their way home after long seafaring journeys. And there were tons of products being brought back from the New World to be sold in European markets. The scientific community in Europe was also developing at a rapid pace thanks to the widespread adoption of the printing press. 
A notable scientific discovery made during this time was the concept of the conservation of mass by Lavoisier. Lavoisier's wife, Marie Anne Pauls, was his research partner, and she probably knew a lot more than he did actually. Without her knowledge, he probably wouldn't have been able to make the discovery. She knew French, English, and Latin. She kept up to date on all of the latest scientific research, and she translated it to share with Lavoisier. She was the one who actually learned about phlogiston theory, the existing theory of heat at the time. Unfortunately, this is mostly just a sign of the times that they lived in. Women in the scientific community at this point were not really regarded very well. It seems that social progress is a little bit slower than technological progress. But that's what this series is all about. To show just how rapid the advancement of technology can really be, it follows an exponential curve. And this means that it can advance very quickly in a very short amount of time. I might sound biased. Maybe I am biased because I'm an engineer. But I think that you'll probably agree with me once we take a look at the facts. I like to think that in the modern day, both Marie Anne Pauls and Antoine Lavoisier would be credited equally on their discoveries. But progress takes a lot of time. Science was making long strides in the advancement of human knowledge. Scientists were able to postulate new theories for natural phenomena, share their findings with their peers, and collaborate with other researchers across the continent. Thanks to the Renaissance, science could begin to advance once again, unimpeded by religious oversight, and researchers could publish theories about energy, light, and heat. The invention of the water frame by Richard Arkwright and the economic shift from craftsmen to factories was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. But this revolution of industry would really pick up steam with the invention of the steam engine. Of course, to understand how to manipulate steam, it helps a lot if you can understand what it actually is evaporated water. This is why the conservation of mass is so important. If you've ever taken a look at a steam table, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Originally, the steam engine was only designed as a water pump to clear water from coal mines. After numerous inventors took the water pump design and iterated on it, they eventually made the design efficient enough that it could achieve a high enough level of performance to drive conventional factory machinery. This is when the Industrial Revolution really changed the world. Steam engines could allow factories to be built in any city, in any location, because it no longer required a river current for power. Additionally, the steam engine allowed for the invention of the locomotive, allowing for goods to be shipped back and forth between factories at speeds that were completely unmatched by vehicles of the time, ships and horse-drawn wagons. Over time, we saw this trend of mechanization slowly overtake almost every aspect of life. Horses are a rarity in the modern world. Most people opt for the ease and convenience of automobiles. Of course, this breakneck pace of technological advancement was not without its growing pains. Workplace accidents, labor unrest, and child labor were all very common during this period of time. It might be a little bit jarring for our modern sensibilities, but as I've said before, the more things change, the more they stay the same.